The new Star Wars game has been announced by EA, and it looks like we're in for a dogfight. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 things you need to know about Star Wars Squadrons. Starting off at number 10, this is a first-person game. Now that's pretty interesting because in the past, any Star Wars game with the words Squadron in the title were third-person. Now I think it might be a little early to be asking the question if they're trying to make a Rogue Squadron style game in a new style, but understanding it is first person does show us that there are some major differences. Now we don't know that there's going to be any simulator style gameplay mechanics. It's possible given the first person perspective, but in general we've primarily seen Star Wars games with pretty arcadey controls and that's just fine. My question more around first person is, how different is it going to be from previous Star Wars dogfighting? The dogfighting in Battlefront 2 is actually pretty good, although it's very third person oriented, so in a few days when we see actual gameplay, I'm very interested to see exactly how much of a departure this is from what we know of Star Wars dogfighting. At number 9 is the inclusion of VR for the PS4 and the PC versions of this game. Now, that could be really, really good. We've seen very good implementation of VR in a lot of games now. In theory, this could actually be very interesting. However, it could also just kind of be a gimmick, given that it's not going to be the experience for a lot of players playing this game. Arguably with PS4 and PC, they're going to give the majority of players the option to play with VR, but there's going to be a significant number of people on the Xbox One that just don't even have the option, don't think about it, don't have the choice, don't care. The game has to be good for them, and the developers know that, so are they tacking on the VR? Let's hope not. An actually good VR X-Wing simulator, I mean, that prospect sounds pretty good to me. As VR kind of matures into a real thing, this is kind of the type of thing we want from it, you know? And I'm somebody who for many years has been very skeptical of VR. Seeing it finally kind of mature into something that works has left me wanting more experiences like, well, what I've just described. At number 8, this is a game that has full cross-play enabled, and that's pretty cool, honestly. Like, this could work out very well, or actually very badly too. We've talked about both the pros and the cons of crossplay. Obviously, the biggest pro is being able to play with your friends across any platform. Some people are going to play on PC, some PlayStation 4, some Xbox One, so on and so forth. We love that. Is VR going to be an advantage or a disadvantage? That's a question we have not seen asked in any crossplay discussion. But we are going to see a mix of people playing with VR and people not playing with VR in this game, and that's something that I'm very interested in seeing personally. Then of course there's the obvious PC pratfalls, which are that you can use the PC to cheat a little bit easier than other platforms, and the other platforms are more or less left vulnerable to the cheaters. Still, I can't help but think this is a good thing for this game. Like, this is one of those games where you just really want, like, a friend on your headset. Living the Star Wars dogfight experience is just, like, a perfect thing for that. Let as many people in as you can. At number 7, we know a little bit about the progression that's going to go on in this game. You'll be able to move up the ranks, obviously, this is a dogfighting game. Nowadays, if there wasn't some sort of progression system, it'd be weird. But you can earn various modifications and components for your starfighters. Like, you're not just going to be able to do cosmetic items, you are going to be upgrading your weapons, your hulls, your engines. But as far as cosmetic stuff, you can actually customize your cockpit, your flight suit, your helmet, and even your ship exterior, so that's going to be really interesting. Interesting. But here's the nice thing about it, all of this stuff, all of it, is unlocked via gameplay and not via microtransactions, just none. I'm sure unlocked through gameplay brings up a question that we will address in the next point, but in some respects it does seem like we're going to see some sort of management of your ship. We can't really paint a picture of exactly how deep that goes, but it's definitely deeper than anything we've seen in the last decade. At number 6, I mentioned another question, being that everything is unlocked through gameplay and not microtransactions, that doesn't mean there can't be loot boxes. But, here's the thing, there's not. Even if loot boxes exist solely inside the game and you can't put any real money into them, they're still very annoying, and they're not in this game, thankfully. The company is promising that there's nothing along these lines in this game. From the looks, like I said, you'll be earning components, maybe XP, but probably nothing more deep than that. Which is great, that's exactly what I want. I don't want to be dealing with this microtransaction crap. Make me more game if you want me to spend more money. Give me a DLC or an expansion pack or something. Don't try to hide parts of this game behind gambling or annoying purchases. Just, you know, it is nice to see kind of a pullback from that, because that was really becoming a problem for a few years there, although Star Wars is now kind of the franchise that popped the bubble, so to speak. It makes sense that they would go this route.
At number 5, we don't actually have gameplay from it yet, however, we do have some screenshots. We've seen two squadrons, one from the Imperial side, one from the Republic side. We've seen briefing rooms, which might add are very cool looking. Pretty accurate as far as this Star Wars fan's eyes can tell. They seem to use the screenshots to confirm what kinds of ships we'll be seeing. On the New Republic side, we're seeing X-Wings, Y-Wings, A-Wings, and the U-Wing, which was present in uh, Rogue One, if you recall, probably most prominently. On the Imperial side, we see the plain old TIE Fighter, the TIE Interceptor, TIE Bomber. I mean, we used to be given very large dumps of screenshots long before video was the norm online, and we only really got seven, but they did use those seven to confirm a few things for us, which is cool, and they are very impressive looking screenshots as well. But in my opinion, these screenshots were more to get your curiosity going, and they have. Based off what we see in these screenshots, as well as the trailer that we've seen, I would really like to see this game in motion, and we will in a few days. At number 4, this game has 5 versus 5 multiplayer. Now, that sounds generally pretty small. A lot of games are really going for as many players as they can, given the technology, but I'm gonna go ahead and say I don't think that that's the reason they've gone with 5 versus 5 here. I really don't think VR would be that big of a tax, per se, on the server. You're just basically talking about viewing angle. So my opinion is that they've probably chosen this for gameplay-specific reasons. I'm going to go ahead and say that I think that this bodes well for the inclusion of some simulator elements. 10 is not a lot of people for a game nowadays, and it may be that they want to keep the matches simple to some extent, given possibly slightly more complex than arcade controls. I don't know. But we also know that you will be forming up your squad and planning ahead of the matches, apparently. Now, there probably is going to be a lot of AI ships in the air as well. But I think this piece of information is very interesting as it paints a bit of a different idea for what we're doing. At number three, uh, there are apparently two multiplayer modes that have been revealed. Fleet battles, which is where you destroy a capital ship, and dogfights, which is where you destroy as many other ships as you can. To me, the more interesting sounds like the fleet battles. Having to destroy a capital ship sounds like it involves more strategy, and it sounds up to this point like they might be leaning a little bit into strategy elements, which might make that a more interesting mode. But of course, dogfights is... I mean, why wouldn't you want that? As far as multiplayer, it sounds like they've put a lot of thought into this one, which is good because we haven't really seen online multiplayer in a memorable fashion in a flying only Star Wars game in... I, I, have we seen that? Is that something they've done? Like Rogue Squadron Split Screen is the last one of those I can really remember. Purely flying? There's not been a lot of that type of game. Number two, here's where I was probably most concerned the moment I heard this. Is this a multiplayer only game? It's not. There is a single player campaign, which apparently will quote unquote bring to life the events following the Battle of Endor when the Rebel Alliance successfully destroyed the second Death Star. So it lists that the story is going to be one where you play as two alternating pilots that you'll be able to customize, one from the New Republic and one from the Galactic Empire or the remnants of it at this point. And apparently we're gonna see a lot of original characters as well as some cameos. Obviously we don't know exactly what that means, but it will be cool to see some of our favorite characters directly post the fall of the second Death Star. Now obviously the story is gonna center somewhat around building the New Republic as a legitimate force, but we don't know exactly what that means just yet, still definitely good. Finally, at number one, some information about the release. It is coming on October 2nd of this year to PC, PS4, and Xbox One. So that's not a particularly long time to wait, especially since we just found out what it is now. It's also got a more than fair price point of $40, which is also specifically why we're kind of questioning the VR a bit. My hope is that the skepticism is totally unnecessary and we get a great VR Star Wars game. But if we get just a great Star Wars dogfighting game, then who really cares, honestly? $40 is like I said, a more than fair price point, especially given we aren't seeing any of the bloat. We will be seeing gameplay from this game in a couple of days on the 18th, which is of course very exciting, but not necessarily shocking. We need to see gameplay of this game. It's not a long time before it releases. I think it's going to be good though. What do you-